So Genshin released a new tool called the Training Guide, and it's something they implemented to help new players figure out how to build their characters. And as someone who has a lot of very well-built characters and makes guides, this is my opinion on it. I feel like they did do something pretty nice with this, but I do have some small issues with it. So obviously my characters are very well built, the ones that I decide to build, but there's a few things that I think they could improve on. So one thing is that all the weapons they recommend are weapons that you have, except sometimes they recommend weapons that are craftable that you don't have, and they'll have a crafting symbol. However, what's inconsistent is, like say Farina, right? One of her best weapons is the Fontaine Fishable weapon that I think is called the Fleuv Ferryman thing. That weapon is actually really good, but it's not recommended here. And I feel like it should be recommended with like a fishing symbol. Or let's say you have the catch or you don't have the catch. The catch should always be a, in a recommendation with a fishing symbol, even if you don't have it, because it's something that everyone can get. It's a permanent free weapon. So if they have a craftable weapon suggested, they should also have fishable weapons in the suggestions. So the other thing I think they can improve on is for some characters, like let's say Yelan for example, right? You technically do not need to level up her weapon because she scales purely off HP. So the base attack of the weapon doesn't matter. The only thing that you get from upgrading is more ER, which is nice. Like ideally you should level it up, but it's not super necessary. Like my Yelan without a weapon, let me just uh, switch to her real quick. So, bye bye, Candace. And I'll put Who's a Yelan, right? This time? Okay, I'm gonna go find an enemy, and then I'll show you that a Yelan with a level 1 weapon is perfectly fine. Okay, so this is my Yelan damage with a level There's 1 no weapon. Way. As you can see, 19,000. Now, I wonder if I can switch mid fight. So as you can see, leveling up the weapon isn't actually that important for Yelan. The fact that they say that she's a bit weak, um, it's a little weird because I feel like in this situation, the weapon level doesn't matter that much. And let me switch to a level 90 um, Favonius bow and show you the difference between the level 1 and the level 90. So I was doing like 19,000 hits on on a level 1 Favonius bow. Now let's see how much damage I do with a level 90. And then maybe you'll see whether or not the training guide makes sense in this situation. Gotcha. So it's the same damage because nothing really changed. She doesn't care about base attack of the weapon. The only thing is if you use your ultimate now, it comes back a little quicker because you have more energy recharge. But damage is the same. This should be 8,000. Yeah. So there's no difference in damage between a level 90 weapon and a level 1 weapon. So for non-attack scaling characters like Freena and Yelan, you actually don't need to level up their weapon whatsoever. This is only true because ER is not a combat stat. So if you have a weapon like Aqua Simulacra, then leveling it up will give you more crit damage, which will in turn increase your damage. So in some situations, it does matter leveling your weapon, but in other situations, it doesn't. Same thing with Freena. With, if you have a weapon like this, where there's a lot of crit damage that you get from leveling it up, then obviously you do want to level this up. But if I suddenly change Freena into something like the Sacrificial Sword, this is an energy recharge weapon as well. So leveling it up actually doesn't really improve her damage whatsoever. So if you have enough energy with a level 1 weapon, like I have 150 ER, I think that's good enough for me right now, then there's no reason for me to, to level it up any further. But the training guide would suggest that you, you should. So that's just something to consider. I, I feel like overall they did a good thing with the training guide. A brief overview of just the things that I wish they could improve. Um, obviously they should recommend fishable weapons because they recommend craftables. So if they recommend craftables, they should in turn recommend fishable weapons. For certain characters with certain weapons, like this Favonius Warbow for Yelan, 
you do not need to level it up at all. And then for artifact sets, I just wish they specify which team comp each artifact set is made for because someone like Rosaria would change her artifact set based on how you play her. If you're playing her in a freeze team, then you obviously want Blizzard Dreyer. But if you're playing her in a melt team, then you probably want Emblem or Noblesse. Also, a character like Goro, at least for people in the end game, like people like me, for a character like Goro, I feel like they don't recommend 4-star artifacts, which is a problem because Goro's best artifact set is actually a 4-star set called the Exile, and it's not recommended here. But I'm just going to show you what the Exile does because it's a pretty strong artifact set for Goro. It regenerates energy for the rest of your team, and because Goro himself doesn't do any noteworthy damage and he barely takes any field time, it's actually alright for him to have a 4-star artifact set instead of a 5-star set. Like, if I were to change all of these pieces to the Exile, the only thing that I'll probably see is a little less crit rate, which means it'll be a little harder to proc Favonius Particles, but I won't really notice much else. Maybe I'll lose a couple hundred damage. When your main carry is doing like 50k damage a hit, losing a couple hundred damage on Goro, it's not the end of the world. Some other small issues with it include new characters where there's no data available because obviously in that scenario it doesn't help and then for characters like Fischl it's recommending that I level up her ultimate even though it doesn't really do anything and the same thing with Shengling <clears throat> it's suggesting that I level up Goba even though it's not necessary and for a character like Amber if I'm using her purely for Burgeon none of her talents matter whatsoever in certain scenarios like this, knowing what to level and what not to level can save you a lot of resources. So the training guide overall, it's a good tool. For people who refuse to leave a game to watch guides, which I'm sure there's people like that. Like if you're playing a game, it doesn't make sense for the game to force you to go somewhere else to get information. Then in that situation, this is actually pretty useful, but it doesn't give you the full picture. Like I wouldn't say it's misleading you, to recommend leveling up a weapon like Favonius Warbo. Obviously leveling it up doesn't hurt, but I feel like it's very low on the priority list. Compared to say if you're playing Wanderer, then this would be much higher priority. So this is a good start. I like this tool, it's not perfect. And I feel like the, t the areas where it doesn't work are very, very niche. And for the most part, it won't matter to most of the player base. It's just if you're min-maxing your resources, then this doesn't give you the full picture, but it certainly is better than nothing. I think it's worth making a guide on how you should prioritize uh, your resin spending because it's a limited resource and a lot of people may not know what to focus on first. It obviously depends on character to character, but I think making a video on how I go through my thought process on spending resin it might be it might be valuable